start. Hello everyone, my name is Terence Eden. Um, I do cool mobile internet things, uh, and one of the things that I love doing is QR codes. Um, I've been doing mobile web stuff for about nine years, ten years. I've been doing QR codes for five of those years, um, long, long before they were fashionable in this country. Um, uh, just to give you a bit of background about me, uh, so I talk to all sorts of people who want to incorporate QR codes into their strategy. So that could be government departments, um, it could be um, FMCGs, um, charities, museums, uh, just say QR codes, they're awesome. Um, but recently I, I got very frustrated because people are getting very down on QR codes. They're saying they're shit. I'm going to say no, they're not shit. It's just people are using them in, in entirely the wrong way. And there are lots of myths bubbling up about QR codes, uh, which I want to address. Um, and uh, so th this, is, this is a chance for me to, to set the record straight, hopefully to, to give you some information about what QR codes are, what they can do, what they can't do, um, and you know, a, a, few, a few lessons uh, that I've learned along the way. If you've got any questions, um, don't feel the need to stick your hand up, just shout them out. Um, if you want to throw stuff at me, that's fine as well. And uh, sorry, your name was? Louise is going to be my able assistant today, and every time I every time I point like that, she's going to hit the next key, uh, that little arrow there, probably do, and it will go on to the next slide. So, big round of applause for Louise there for her daily volunteering. Yeah! Our aside, dear me. Okay, so, on to the next slide. Um, so, a <coughs> little bit of history. This is a barcode. You've probably seen this before because they're on absolutely everything. Um, now, what a lot of people don't realise is this, this barcode here, this is just a string of numbers. When uh, a barcode scanner scans it, all it sees is that number at the bottom. You may wonder why barcodes have numbers at the bottom. Those are the human readable form of that. So when you buy a packet of gum and you, you scan it at the supermarket, it sees that string of numbers, the, the scanner, it goes off to a database and says, what is this? And the database goes, that's a packet of gum and that's 50p. That gets sent back and then the cashier says, and so on. But there's no real information in there. Um, and they've been around for ages. So this is Mad Magazine from August 78. This was when, I think it was Walmart, mandated that every single product which came through their stores had to have a barcode. Uh, and so almost overnight, um, barcodes were just everywhere in the States, and then they spread everywhere else. And it, it, it is virtually impossible to find something in the supermarket, apart from maybe fresh fruit and veg that's, that's loose, which doesn't have a barcode. They, they're just part of the fabric of society now. I think QR codes are, uh, are going the same way. So uh, there's a whole bunch of different 2D uh, barcode standards. So um, you may have seen this one if you've ever booked um, a train ticket or a plane ticket. Uh, you may have seen this one uh, is on UPC and sort of Dell tracking things. This one here is Microsoft's laughable effort. Um, but they all have the, the same thing in common. It is rather than just using vertical lines, which can really only hold a small amount of data like numbers, these uh, have horizontal and vertical components, which means they can hold a huge bunch of data. So they can hold text, um, which then means that they can hold URLs and other really, really cool things. Um, doing great on that sort of stuff. Um, so this is what a QR code is. You've probably seen one. Um, let me just. So this is um, this morning's Metro. So um, this isn't, you know, pre-prepared. There's like here we go. There's Four, three or four different QR codes just you know, opening up at random. They're, they are getting everywhere. And the brilliant thing is that they can hold uh, you know, text. They're very quick and easy to scan. QR means quick response. It, it's designed that once your uh, QR app is open, it should be able to read that code uh, in under a second. It might need to focus, but generally speaking, it's quick. Quicker than typing in HTTP or www. Even on a, even on a touch phone. Um, and they work on more or less any camera phone. So QR codes are an open standard. No one owns them. Um, if I just pop back to this one here. So this Microsoft one, uh, only Microsoft are allowed to create those tags. And only Microsoft are allowed to create the readers for those tags, which means there are very few readers about. Whereas, because this is a free and open standard, Samsung, Windows Phone 7, uh, crappy old Java phones, Blackberries, anything can read QR codes. If it's got a camera, it can scan that. Um, and it is basically free. Um, there are a few apps which charge, but on every platform that I found, people are able to download a free QR scanner. So it, it's, I think it's fantastic. We're seeing more phones with them built in. Some of the uh, Symbian phones have them. 
rules for Windows Phone 7 from 7.5 onwards. When you get visual search, there's a QR scanner in there as well. Next slide, please. Um, so th this is the first myth that I think lots of people have, is that QR codes are just a URL. Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, it's, a, it's a string of text, usually UTF-8, um, which means that it's, uh, when, when the phone scans it, sees a string of text, it can interpret it. So it can just be plain text. You can put a QR code up, which when you scan it says, hey, welcome to wherever, a bit dull. Uh, you can have URLs to scan that, it'll take you somewhere. But then also phone numbers. So if you want to encourage people to call up for a special offer, and you've got one of these hideously long phone numbers, which you know people are constantly misdiving, scan it, and your phone will start dialing. The same with SMS as well. So if you want to say SMS fun to 86117, we know from studies that people get, you know, they do uppercase when they're meant to do lowercase, they put they misspell things, they type the wrong pre short code and end up subscribing to, to premium rate SMSs. This is scan, absolutely no mistakes. Same with emails. You can also do V cards as well, so you can put your whole contact information in there. So you scan you scan the V card and boink, uh, someone's address is on your address book. So it, it's not just URLs whole bunch of things. Uh, so this is the big myth. <laughs> no one uses QR codes. Well, let, let's just uh, take a look. Next slide, please. Uh, they, they're everywhere. This was, you know, within five minutes of each other in London, you know, the Grant Museum of Zoology on the London Underground, in the Metro, graffiti stickers, you know, they're, they're just being stuck everywhere uh, at the moment. And we, we're seeing a huge rise in, in numbers. Um, and they can be printed on just about anything. So Coke cans, uh, this is a poster for the new Madeline, a book about Madeleine McCann. Uh, this is a menu I found which says, hey, you, you want to read our menu online? Scan, scan this QR code. All right, okay. Um, and in all sorts of places. So this is Argos. I mean, Argos I don't think of as being particularly high tech. But what they've started doing is, on lots of the pages, they say, well, do you want to know more about this TV? Because obviously you can't cram that much information into, into a page. Scan it, and your phone takes you to the mobile Argos site where you can see 360 degree photos, you can read the latest reviews, you can see the price has dropped. Um, and then here, basically, QR codes are really cheap. They're black ink on white paper. That's it. Which means you can print them basically anywhere for zero cost. So here, using the back of a train ticket to put a little advert saying, buy more train tickets. Um, and all that's costing me is, can we adjust the print run so we use a slightly different amount of black ink? Okay, then. You know, no retooling needed. Really, really easy. Um, so here, here's the other big myth. Yeah, 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 they're everywhere, but no one scans QR codes. No one does. And in fact, if we take a look, there's this really popular <laughs> pictures of people scanning QR codes, and there's none there. <laughs> uh, so it, it, is, it is a really sort of uh, hip thing to say now. Yeah, oh, they're everywhere, but no one scans them. In actual fact, uh, that's not true. Lots of people do. I'm, I'm going to take a smaller version, which is uh, in the world of advertising, um, I think we've been installed. So if you've ever, you know, bought a poster uh, or you post a space or an advert somewhere, you, know, you put your web address on there or you put a phone number. How do you know how many people responded from that poster? Chances are you don't, uh, unless you've actually put up a unique URL or a unique phone number. People have very little idea of how many people are actually responding to these massive ad campaigns that they're doing. But with QR codes, we actually have now have a means to track each individual poster, see how well each one has been doing. And um, that's what I've done. Uh, so does anyone here use Bitly or uh, the Google URL short? Stick your hands up if you do. Cool. Did you know that all of your clicks and all of your stats are available for anyone to see? It's brilliant. If you did, congratulations. I was doing a, a chat with a, a company who shall uh, remain, uh, remain nameless, especially as I'm being videoed. Um, where they said, oh yeah, we do all of our campaigns, we make sure a month in advance that we uh, we secure the, the bit.ly URL that we want. I said, do you know that your competitor can go to your bit.ly page and see all those URLs and see which ones are uh, you know, getting the most clicks? And they went, oh dear. <laughs> uh, so what, what I've done is uh, I've taken a look at some popular uh, QR codes that have been around and taken a look at their stats to see um, how often they're being scanned. So on the next slide, this is TFL. TFL has started putting up posters saying if you're waiting for a bus, scan this QR code, and it takes you to our mobile bus train service, which is brilliant in itself, because you know it's a really good service. And it started off really slowly. They were getting maybe 3,000 scans a month. Um, but they put up a fair few of these posters. 
in total, since they've been running, which is October, they've had 32,000 scans. And in the last month alone, there's been close to 12,000 people have scanned in their codes. Now, okay, 12,000 people across the whole of London, across however many sites they put up, might not be a huge uh, response rate. But it shows two things. One is people are responding to these efforts, 12,000 of them a month at least. And secondly, well, how do we know how many people would have visited that website or responded to this advert? Uh, if there hadn't been a QR code, if it had just been a normal thing. Uh, so, on to the next slide. This is rail tickets. So, that one that I showed you earlier. Um, again, I don't know, they, they certainly aren't on the back of every rail ticket. The one I bought this morning didn't have one, annoyingly. Um, but we can see here that these ones which are being printed out are being scanned two to three hundred times a day. Now, I'm presuming it's not the same two or three hundred people scanning it each day because that would make them incredibly sad. Um, but people are scanning them, normal people. Um, and this is a project that I help run called QRpedia. So QRpedia uh, is a project which is uh, devised by myself, Roger Bankin, uh, and a whole host of uh, other talented people on the internet. It puts QR codes in museums and art galleries, places like that, you scan it, it takes you to the mobile Wikipedia article in your language of the thing that you're looking at. Uh, so we did a trial in the, uh, I'm going to mangle the pronunciation, the Juan Miro Foundation, which is uh, an art museum in Barcelona. And uh, they stuck QR codes on all of the paintings, not actually on the paintings, that would be <laughs> wrong, uh, but next to the paintings, uh, saying, want more information about this painting, scan here and get it in your language. And what we saw is, in, in six months, uh, 12,381 scans from one uh, fairly small museum. I mean, you know, it, it's a great great space, but you know, it doesn't get the huge amount of football traffic like, say, the British Museum might. Um, and they can start to see, well, you know, which are the most popular paintings which are being scanned, which are the least popular. So there are 12,000 tourists and art lovers going through a museum uh, able to uh, read up about it. Next slide, please. Um, there's this other myth. And yeah, QR codes, they're, they're fine for now. But basically, we're, we're going to use our cameras and we'll just recognize URLs. Yeah, so why, why bother with that? Well, the thing is, that's bollocks. Um, sorry, uh, let me um, get a more formal scientific way. The spot of bollocks. Uh, so there's this um, one, just two words that you need to know, which are homographic disambiguation, which means, uh, it's good, it's a nice little everyone together, homographic <laughs> disambiguation. <laughs> what it means is that computers are really bad at recognizing uh, where the, which characters certain things are. So one of these is a capital I, the other is a lowercase l. You can tell me which one it is. And the one looks fairly similar. And a forward slash, which you use a lot in URLs, again, fairly similar. Open brackets, C and G, I mean, you can see that 9 and G, Classic example, someone scans it and, you know, apparently this camera uh, is meant to be able to tell, oh, well, that's a 9 in the URL, not, not a G. They, they just can't. Humans can't most of the time. That's why QR codes are so good, because there's, there's absolutely no uh, ambiguity there. Um, so, uh, yes, we will be able to do better visual rec uh, recognition, but it is such a long way off, and this is far, far from a, uh, a solved problem. Uh, the next thing is NFC. Everyone's talking about NFC. Yeah, RFID, we're going to put stickers on the back of our phones and pay for everything and we'll just pay away. Oh, it's going to be cool. No, this is rubbish as well. Uh, so, and here's why. Um, well, the first thing is the cost of the readers. It's actually quite expensive to fit the NFC hardware into your phone. So how many people here have an NFC reader on their phone? So in a room of geeks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's like a, a quarter of all the top geeks in the world here have an NFC. How many people in the real world have an NFC phone? There's, there's eight. It's you guys. You were the only people who have NFC reading phones. And it, it's kind of, it's not easily something you can retrofit. So there's, I don't know, the GSMA says so there's something like five billion mobile phones in the world, and eight of them have NFC readers in there. Now, any, anything which has a camera can be a QR reader, but you, you need extra hardware to make a, uh, uh, an NFC reader, and that's expensive. The other thing is that the tags themselves are, um, are fairly pricey, so and buying in bulk, you can get them down to about 2p each, between 2 and 5p, which is cheap-ish, but if you think, well, I want to do uh, 10,000 beer mats to distribute around, around pubs, and I have to pay an extra 2p for each of them to put an NFC chip in, or I can just print black ink on them and their QR codes. All of a sudden, that's, that's a really easy decision to make. And the same for retooling as well. There is no way you can fit NFCs into the paper. It's just impossible. Um, so QR codes win again. Um, discoverability, which is a word that I've coined, which is how do you know that an, 
that something has an NFC chip that you can read. Well, you need a little sign to say, hey, here's an NFC. So you need to print something on there. So why not print, say, a QR code? <laughs> uh, well, um, and, oh, yeah, distance. This, this is the other one. QR codes you can read from a fair distance. So um, when I put one on here, someone at the back of the room can probably scan it. And we see these on billboards that you can scan. NFC, you have to be within a couple of centimeters, which means if I want to give information to you, you will have to come up and, oh, well, you can't reject an NFC. Uh, but, you know, you need to walk up and actually physically touch, which means that they get damaged. So NFC is a bit shit, really. Uh, now I'm biased, but um, uh, there's a, a fuller discussion on my blog. But I think NFC is... NFC is like cold fusion. It is going to change the world, and it is only five years away. But people have been saying that for about 15 years, so um, I'm also hot on NFC. Um, thank you. So this, this one is, yeah, with QR codes, you stick them up, and then they get damaged, and no one can read them. Again, this is a myth. Next slide, please. Well, I mean, I say it's a myth. Obviously, you know, you can scratch a QR code off, but, you know, you can deface it and do anything uh, to it. This makes me so sad. I don't know. I saw this on a... Um, I'm going to stuck this to a, uh, a postbox. It just made me sad. Is that, that's sad of me, isn't it? <laughs> okay. However, what you can do is this thing called error correction. So all three of these are exactly the same, uh, contain exactly the same data, but they've got different levels of error correction. So hands up if you know what Reed Solomon error correction is. You know, the same people who had NFC. But <laughs> um, you know how you can scratch a CD and basically it will, it will probably play okay, even if you scratch it quite a bit. Well, that's the theory. The data is stored redundantly around the disk, which means if one part is damaged, the, the CD can read the rest. And it's exactly the same with the error correction here. So um, essentially with this one, with the more error correction, is that you know, I can do that, I can deface part of the code, and it will still be scannable, which is really good if you're putting QR codes outside or in environments where they're likely to get dirty or damaged. So this one at the end, you can, I think, uh, disrupt about 7% of it. This one here, you can disrupt 30% of the code and it will still be scannable, uh, which is awesome. Next slide, please. QR codes look boring. Mm. Now, th there is some truth in this, and lots of designers say, well, I don't want a QR code signing my nice print artwork and everything like that. But the thing is, I remember back in the day when we started saying, hey, can we put our email address or our website on the poster, on the advert? And designers would say, no what the hate, no one, HTTP colons, slashes, <laughs> these look ugly, and at symbol, no one knows where the at symbol is on the keyboard. Because you know they, they just you know when they now I challenge you to find you know, an advert or a post or something which doesn't have an email address or a website because they're they're part of the fabric. But I will agree that to start with, um, they can look a bit blocky and ugly. I think they look beautiful, but I'm biased. So on the next slide, you can do really quite cool things with them. So um, I think this is the uh, one of the first ones that I saw. Someone embedded the BBC logo in there. So remember I talked about error correction. So they disrupted the middle. Well, that's maybe. 15-20% of that, to put in a logo. The code still scans, um, and it works fine. You, you have these really weird ones. This one doesn't scan so well, but it does look pretty awesome. Yeah, you, QR code. Um, you can do different colors. The main thing is, there must, must be enough contrast between the dark and the white. Uh, this is one that I've made with a, a um, space invader, which is cool. Uh, and this is one where someone has uh, crocheted or made a quilt. What, what do you, is it quilted a quilt? Does anyone know? Anyone do quilting here? Sounds like dodgy sexual practice. Okay, good. Um, can we edit that out from the video? Um, so you, you can do really cool things with them. You can incorporate your brand. Um, you can mess around with the format. As long as it's recognisable, um, you need to test these as well. But you can do some cool, interesting things with them. Um, this is my favourite. So take a second to have a look at this. This is um, an artist called uh, Ming Lin. It does work, yeah. Um, so the colours are light enough so that when the uh, phone sees them, it sees them as white-ish, uh, and the black is black. Um, so you do it. This works better. Uh, I'm not sure how it will work, scale up this high. Um, I'm going to cry for those people trying it now. This will be interesting. Um, but that takes you to, a, to uh, the site, which uh, allows you to see this. But that is, you, know, you look at that, and it's only after a second that you realise it's QR code. Now, that's probably taking it a bit too far, because you want to tell people this is what this thing is. Um, but I love that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, however, there, there is a, another myth which people come up with, which is you can change the colours completely, you can invert them, uh, and this is disastrous, this is bullshit. Um, 
So this is art from the underground, um, and this is why, it just doesn't bloody scan. I think there's like one iPhone scanner which will go, oh, I know, I'll, I'll invert it, see if that works. But everyone else goes, no, I... These, these three things are angle squares. The QR scanner needs to find them, and needs to see, oh, this is uh, white, black, white, black, great, I know this is a QR code. When it's inverted, it goes, I ain't seen nothing, mate. Um, so don't, don't invert them, because they won't work, and you'll look like an idiot, like uh, these people do. Um, Ah, oh, yeah, this is, this is the other one. You need to have mobile and Wi-Fi or, or Wi-Fi to use a QR code. Well, uh, no, is the short answer. If you're doing something like um, a phone number or, or a text, you know, you can scan it and you can still make the call even if you don't have a data signal or you can queue up that SMS to, to go later. But we see a lot of people putting uh, QR codes on the underground, London underground, and then people sneering and saying, oh, you can't get any signal down there. Well, A, uh, in a couple of weeks, yes, you will, uh, Virgin are putting a whole bunch of Wi-Fi down there. But also, most QR scanners are aware of this. And if we take a look at the next slide, Dick Sterling worked there. Uh, so this is, this is the history of my QR scanner. So whenever I scan a code, it stays in my history, which means if I'm on the underground, I see something, scan it, save there, and I mean, I can click on it, and my browser will open and say no signal, and then when I get above ground, I can go here, or I can just go back through my history and say, oh, yes, I wanted to see that. No, it probably is best to do it where you know people do have data connectivity, but it, it's not an absolute must. Um, oh, well, they're a bit technical, aren't they? Oh, look at QR codes, the magic. No, uh, so I, I, did, I did take a uh, department through how to generate QR codes, and they, they booked um, uh, two 90-minute slots, and we did it in 90 seconds. Um, so th this is, it's really easy, so just take a look at the next slide. So there's a whole bunch of websites, so you can go to Google Code, uh, sorry, Google Charts, uh, and you can create your own uh, QR codes there. You just type in the details that you want, hit go, QR code appears. Really is that simple. Um, there are PHP services which you can use if you want to generate it uh, on your website. Computer programs, if you run uh, Linux, there's a program called QR Encode, that's similar for Mac and uh, Windows. Finally, I've released an open source tool called QR Generator PHP. What an original name. Um, which will allow you to, you can run that as a, as a web service, do whatever you want with it. Um, all you need to do is you pass it a string of text and say, I want this sort of error correction and this sort of size, and it will spit out a QR code. Um, and if you really have trouble doing it for you, I will quite happily, I mean, there are people who will charge you, you know, 10 pounds to generate QR codes. I'll, I'll charge you 9.99, I'm happy to undercut them, because it's, <laughs> if, if someone's charging you for QR codes, they're probably ripping you off. Uh, next slide, please. QR codes are easy to use. Now, I put this down as a bit of a myth, because I think they are. For, from the consumer point of view, you need to tell people, hey, this, scan this code with your phone, and something cool will happen, and tell them what that is. But despite the people who use QR codes, as in who put them up on uh, posters and in adverts, are sometimes incredibly thick. Um, I, I don't really blame this on QR codes being hard to use. I think it's some people are just hard of thinking. So uh, if I can have the next slide. So this is, I love this one, this is my Isle of white.com. So they did this poster campaign all over the train network that I use. Great thing, blah, blah, blah. Ah, scan, scan this code. Can I just go to the next one? Now, I, I'm not sure if you'll be able to scan it from where you are. If you can just try scanning it, I'd be, I'd be interested. Um, a, it was printed slightly fuzzy, but you scan this code, I scanned it, I clicked on it, it didn't work. I thought, oh, that's weird. That's probably because I'm on the train, I don't have good enough signal. Waited, clicked on it, didn't work. This actually uh, resolves to the URL http colon slash slash white forward slash info. <laughs> are we missing a .com there somewhere? Yes, yes, they were. So they'd. Um, done this lovely multi-million pound, multi-thousand pound QR campaign, and they've forgotten the .com from within their URL. Um, but you, you do see this, and pe people also point their QR codes to full-fat websites, which are run on Flash and other stuff like that. Most people scanning a QR code are going to be using a mobile phone. They might be using a tablet. They're probably using a mobile phone. <laughs> Uh, and if they're using a mobile phone, they may well be using an iPhone, which doesn't run Flash. So having a thing which takes you to a full fat website, which takes ages to download, and then doesn't bloody render on the phone, makes you a little bit special in my book. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, oh, this is another one, yeah. Um, so <laughs> how many people here know what HTTP redirection is? Yeah, the, the three O codes, yes? Yeah, we're all fairly clever. Some people aren't. So uh, what this is Nook, uh, which is the ebook, which is really good. But they, they put up this poster with these two codes next to each other. So if you've got an Android, scan this one. If you've got an iPhone, scan this one. Now there's 
the major problem with this is if you've got two codes close together, sometimes when uh, you're trying to get them in the viewfinder, the QR scanner might get confused and think that they're somehow joined when, when they're not. But you know, this is a waste of space. You know, this should just say, got, a, got an Android or an iPhone, scan this code. You scan this code, it goes to a website, and on the back of the website you say, oh, you're, you're an iPhone, seamless redirection here. Oh, you're an Android, seamless redirection there. Oh, you're a Nokia, that's interesting. We're getting lots of Nokia scanning. If we don't have an app for Nokia, we'll record that and email it to the marketing manager. But just don't be a bit. Uh, Okay, so we're just going to take a little break while I refresh, and this is some monkeys using phones. Don't talk to yourself while I have another peanut. Can they use QR codes? They are, they are scanning QR codes. I, I train these monkeys specially. <laughs> so, do we have any questions so far, lovely, lovely people? No? Oh, they're there at the back. Yeah. Um, what's your preferred Android QR code scanning app? Uh, so uh, there's an app called Zing, Z-X-I-N-G, which I think is now just called Barcode Scanner. So that just works. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different ones, some which um, will email you all the results that you scan, and some will, I don't, I don't know what other extra features they do. But in, in Android, uh, it's generally the first one if you do a search for Barcode Scanner or QR Scanner. Um, on iPhone, um, I'm told Red Laser is good. Um, if you go, sorry? Awesome QR. Right, okay, there's another one. Uh, but basically, go, go to the App Store, type in QR, um, and you know, you'll find them for Windows Phone, for BlackBerry. I've even got one on the BlackBerry Playbook. Huh. Um, so yeah, there, there's a whole, whole bunch of different free readers. There's a question there. there. I'm sorry if you didn't mention SSIDs and passwords. I'm sorry, yes, that, that was one that I was going to do. You can encode um, an SSID uh, and wipe by username and password. So rather than doing a scan, and then, I mean, you know what it's like when you're trying to type in the 16-character pass phrase gibberish. With this, you can just scan scan the QR code, and it will take you, uh, it should invoke uh, your system to connect to the right Wi-Fi network with the right username and password and other stuff, which is pretty awesome. Uh, there's a question at the back and then there, yes. And what's the limitation on the combinations? I mean, is it limited to 70,000 characters? Or? Yeah, so... Um, there, I won't go too technical, but basically, you can have up to 4K text, so about 4,000 characters in there. Now, if you put the error correction up, that goes down a little bit, um, but generally speaking, you can stuff an awful lot in there. Now, the more text you stuff in there, the bigger the QR code gets, as in the denser it is. If we just uh, more info in there, so the more you stuff in there, um, you know, the clearer it needs to be printed, maybe it needs to be slightly bigger. Um, but basically, you're limited to about 4,000 characters of UTF-8. You can fit more so it's, in... It's characters as well. Yeah, so, so that, that, that's... You can't cool. have any data. If you just wanted numbers, I think you can fit in 7,000, 8,000. So if you just wanted a very long number in there, like all the digits of pi, um, which would be a really good use for a QR. I'm going to do that. That's been my entry. It's like mm. all the digits of pi in a QR code. Um, so yeah, so generally speaking, the smaller is better because... They look nicer, they're easier to scan, but yeah, you can stuff as much as you want in there. There are... How do you uh, add a picture to it? How do you add a picture to it? That's a really good question. So, um, if I just flip back, I shall retire your duties for now. It's a big round of applause for Louise for the click button. Um, um, so, uh, Photoshop, GIMP, Microsoft Paint, whatever you want. Oh, so just, just, that. just, just oh, oh. So there's two things. First, when you generate your QR code, um, there are four different levels of error correction, low, medium, quarter, and high. I don't know why that one's called quarter. Oh, yeah, it's because it's 25% error correction, that's why. Uh, I would stick it to high, which gives you 33% redundancy. Then cut out the area that, where you want the logo and see if you can still scan it. If you can't, you've probably cut out too much or you've done something else wrong. Um, and then paste in whatever you want there. The, have, have a play. Keep, keep testing what you're doing. But generally speaking, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff to them, and they will still work. But test, test again. I'm, what I'm going to do uh, once I've taken these questions is just go through my top 10 commandments or 10 tips, just so you, you can get some ideas. Uh, um, how, how much more dense can the information get? Well, I read the table of them, so you can actually watch a video of them like barcode. Yeah. So I have done some experiments with this. So you, if you I mean, you can link a barcode to a YouTube clip, you know, which is cheating. 
Um, but what you can do is someone presented at OTA last year where they did sequential QR codes, each generating about 2K of data. So, and if you can scan them at a rate of you know, two or three barcodes uh, a second, then you can stream data that way. Re realistically, some people have experimented with putting GIFs in there or, or zipped text. G generally speaking, I think it's, that becomes quite complicated because you then you need special hardware or sorry, special software to code it. Um, so for now, I would say sticking sticking to text um, is probably easier. I suppose you could do little smiley faces animating. Did that answer your question, or have I disappointed? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, any anything else? All right, I shall go on to my topic. So if you've got any questions, do do sort of shout out. So there's monkeys. Right. Um, so uh, this is quite boring. I'm just going to skip on to these. So um, the, the number one thing that I'm trying to encourage you to do if you're using these black ink and white background. That will, the higher the contrast, the easier it is uh, for for someone to scan it in. So uh, you know, do that. You also need white space around the edge so that the scanner can differentiate it from the rest of the picture. Um, keep it square as well. You do see some which are uh, deformed. So yeah, here's one which is printed. You can see this is taller than it is wide. This is a misprint. And if you zoom in on it, you can see that it's all quite speckly, which made it fairly hard to scan. Um, the less data in there, the better. So this is a full YouTube URL, www.youtube.com, blah, 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 and this is using the shortened version. And you can see, aesthetically, it might look slightly nicer, but it's that, that little bit smaller, so you can either print it larger or print it smaller, uh, quicker to scan as well. Uh, mobile friendly. Um, this is a big thing. Most people, as I said, scanning your QR code are going to be using a mobile phone. Do not redirect them to your full site, or as I saw one, oh, I don't have a picture of it here. Um, I think it was Easy A. You remember the movie Easy A? Which is pretty cool. They had a QR code, you scanned it, and it went straight to their, their YouTube trailer, which I thought that was awesome. You hit click play and it said, this content is not available on mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, and also check speeds as well. Just because you've got awesome Wi-Fi or awesome 3G coverage, not everyone does. Um, international. Um, not all of your customers, not all, everyone scanning it can speak English. So this is one of the things we did with QRpedia was we detect the language of the user and we just redirect them based on that. So if you know that a user is German, redirect them to the German portion of your site. The other thing is phone numbers. So how many people here store their phone numbers in their phone? It's plus four four at the front. Yes, you guys are awesome. Everyone else, idiots. Um, you know, if you've got someone who's French, say, you know, there's nothing wrong with being French. Uh, but they come over to this country and they scan a QR code with a phone number and it starts 07 something. That can sometimes dial a French number as opposed to the English number because it doesn't start with the country code. Um, so do you know just just take care look, when you're doing things. You, you pay attention to people from uh, other parts of the world. Uh, Multi platform. So you do see signs which say scan this with your iPhone and go to the App Store. As like, well, I don't have an iPhone because. I'm not an idiot. Um, <laughs> that's harsh. Anyone here with an iPhone? No, look at you. Um, but you know, it's just as bad as it scan this with your BlackBerry, and what, what if someone doesn't have a BlackBerry? Um, so have content which will work on all phones, or if not, record who is scanning your QR code and say, you know what, we're getting an awful lot of Android scans. Maybe we ought to look at doing something for them. Uh, and it's the same with videos as well. I, I recommend using YouTube for videos because their mobile stuff is, is pretty good. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, statistics. So th this is the big thing when, when people say, oh, no one's, no one's using QR codes. It's because they're not counting the statistics. They're not publishing the statistics. I, I think, how many people here run websites or have websites? Yes. How many people have stats of some sort, AW stats or, yeah, it's pretty obvious, you know, what, which parts of the site are popular, who's coming, what, what user agents. Do exactly the same with your uh, uh, QR codes as well. The other tip I'd give you is if you can, use a unique QR code on every location that you put it up. Now, this, this can be difficult because, you know, printing challenges, you know, if you're doing a print run, you might not be able to, to change it. But if you're putting up five different posters, make sure it's a unique QR code on each one. So you say, oh, you know what? The QR code in the canteen gets more scans than the one in the toilets because people don't take their phones out in the toilets in case they get arrested. Um, true story. Um, so actually think about those statistics and try and work out what you can do with them as well. Next.
so I'm roping you back in. Um, call to action as well. This is really important. Sometimes, and you'll see this, um, uh, uh, you can take a look through the metro uh, afterwards, you'll just see an advert, you know, really beautiful, blah, 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 and then there's a QR code in the corner. What's it do? Who knows? Now, normally you would say, call our agents now on this phone number to book this holiday, or visit our website for the latest deals. But for some reason, people just think, I'll stick a QR code in the corner, and that'll be fine. People will just scan it. Well, where they want, they need a reason to. So it needs to say above it, you know, Download our app for latest discounts, or scan here to visit our website and see. Tell people where they're going. Give them a reason that they want to scan this code. Because if you don't, people won't scan it. Because you know, what if they scan it and it takes them to an iPhone app or to something that they just don't want or they can't use? Tell people what's there to encourage them to, uh, to scan it. Testing. Oh, this is this is the big one. Test, then test it again, then test it once more, then test it with your friend's phone, then test it with your mum's phone, then. To, it is it's really important. I mean, we, we should all be testing everything that we do on as many different platforms and as many different scenarios. But much like with the inverted QR code that we saw earlier, someone tested that on their iPhone and went, oh, that works, ship it. Okay, well, does it work on BlackBerry? Does it work on this? What happens if um, you know, I scan it, but I'm not in the country, for example? I've, I've taken the metro on the, on the plane with me to New York, and I scan the QR code when I'm in New York. Is that still going to work? Um, so we've seen recently the Open Rights Group did a brilliant report about blocking on mobile networks. Did anyone read that? Oh, shame on you. You should all read that um, and join the Open Rights Group. Um, what they found was that some mobile networks will block certain websites if they believe they're inappropriate um, or they'll put them behind an age barrier. So for example, there's a brilliant website called Untapped, which is four square for beer. So you uh, type in the beer that you're drinking and you can check it. I think that's awesome. But they put it behind the 18 plus because boozing is, you know, you have to be over 18 and want to watch porn to enjoy beer, apparently. Uh, but, you know, you will find that um, some websites get blocked by mobile operators. Um, check to see that yours isn't, you know, check it on each network and make sure that nothing weird uh, is happening. Uh, the lighting conditions one is interesting. So, um, when we did QRpedia, we started off by laminating the QR codes and sticking them up. And what we discovered was when the lights are shining on them, the laminate reflects the light back, so you can't actually see them. Um, so if, you, if you're doing something like on a can of Coke, you know, make sure it's printed matte. Um, we tried sticking the QR codes unlaminated, but behind glass, same problem. So just have a think about um, you know, the different physical scenarios. Um, physical location. Oh, so this is my proper favorite one. We put QRpedia codes all over Derby Museum, which is brilliant. And kids love them. Kids have smartphones. Kids love their smartphones. And then there's kids running, oh, there's another one, mum. Scanning the code, oh, there's another one. And then there was, a, I think it was a hippopotamus. In the, apparently, hippopotamuses used to roam Derby, like back in the day. Who knew? Um, and we'd stuck the QR code, and we, I'd stuck it there, which was about my height. This kid ran, oh, there's another one. Jump, jump, I'm trying to scan. If you put QR codes up too high, yeah, people can't reach them, people can't scan them. Uh, it's the same if they're on the opposite side of the tracks. Um, from a railway station. They need to be big enough so that you can scan. Uh, I think I've got some pictures coming up. Uh, oh, here, here we go. Uh, ten, nine and ten, usefulness. Why are you doing this? Don't just shove a QR code on because it's cool um, or because you think that that's what's required. Think, what, what am I going to get out of this as a, as a person or a business or as an app developer? What, what is my person doing this? And also, well, why, why should I scan this? Well, if a customer sees this, are they going to go... No, I'm not going to scan. Why should I bloody scan this? Work out what it is you're, you're trying to, to give people. Um, next slide. So, um, oh yeah, this is the, uh, the last couple, which is... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have to start again now. That's a filming ruined. So, from the first slide, please. Um, if you're putting them in a retail location or in a museum or somewhere like that, on staff trained... If someone comes up and goes, what are those strange squares? Are your staff going to go, uh -huh. uh, in which case, you know, it looks really bad. You make sure people know what's going on, why you're doing it. Um, and the, the last one is, what's your decommissioning process? If you're sending out, um, you know, a thousand buckets of paint with, or thousands of millions of buckets of paint with QR codes on, what do you do when you decide that you no longer want to run this promotion anymore? How, do you just turn off the website? Do you make it redirect somewhere else? Have a think about what happens the day after your QR code campaign has, uh, has finished. Um, yeah, I've gone through that. That's, uh, that's dull. Uh, and that's it.
That's me. Uh, there's a whole load more information on my blog if you want to read up about QR codes or find me uh, later. Um, but that's it. That's the talk. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are there any more questions, or do you all want to go and get Coca-Cola and other stuff? You can all go if you want, but if you've got any more questions, then you know, shout them out. Question over there. This is the killer question. A round of applause for Kathy. Round of applause for Kathy. Um, there have been various studies, um, some of which uh, linked to my blog, which say that between 12% and 33% of uh, Americans scan with, with the right codes, scan codes, and 40 to 60% recognise what they are. Um, now, how many people are actually doing it? That's a really tough question. But I think the, the main thing is educate people why you're doing it. So the, the slide that I missed out on because I was bored about it was um, how will you tell people what this is and why they should do it? So ideally you would have a little plaque by your QR code which says this is a QR code. Go to your phone's uh, app store, search for QR and download whichever free one you like, then scan this code and you will be taken too. Well that might be a bit of a mouthful, uh, but there are things you can do to educate people around that. At the moment, I, I think they're becoming so commonplace. I mean, when you look at, through them, when you look through the metro, when you <coughs> go on the underground, you know, you just see them everywhere. I think they're becoming more and more understandable. But yeah, there is a way to go to make sure that people understand what they are and understand how to use them. Uh, you're just scratching yourself? Just scratching. You're just scratching myself. Just scratching myself. <laughs> scratching yourself. It's fine. Uh, any other questions? How yes. small can we get? Oh, that's another really good question. Um, it depends on the focal length of the phone. I would say, generally speaking, you don't want it much smaller than about uh, two centimeters. Now, that, that's for a very small code with a, you know not a lot of information in there. Most phones will be able to macro focus in on that. But again, you probably want to, to test them as well. So we put them on uh, the size of bottles about this size, and they've been, uh, yeah, I guess not much bigger than the barcode uh, on there. So you can print them as large as you like, as long as people can go back far enough to scan them. Uh, and as small as you like, you know, so as long as each pixel is very clearly defined, um, they can go fairly, fairly small. Uh, is there a question over here? Someone else scratching themselves, yes. Do you recommend the test sheet when we're doing the scan or the route scan? Yeah. Do you have a test sheet? Um, a test sheet? That's an awesome idea. No. Um, someone, uh, I think it is, I can't remember the chap's name. Um, I'll see if I can find out a tweet about it later, has done a, a sheet of colourful QR codes to say, can your scan read all of these? Um, but no, I might, I might build one, uh, a test thing to see, can you scan and understand all these different QR codes? It's a really good idea. Uh, yes? Is there a sort of an interface where you want to put in a telephone number you hear? Uh, yes, yeah. that's a, that is a really good question. So there is. Uh, I'm just going to flip back all the way here. Maybe go all the way to that. So yeah, so essentially it's the same as uh, URLs, more or less. So if you just want text, then put text in there. If you want a URL, just make sure it starts with HTTP or HTTPS. For telephone numbers, it's the same as on the web. T-E-L colon, and then a number. Um, the phone will recognize that. Um, go, this is a phone number as opposed to just a string of numbers. For email, you can probably get away with just saying, with putting the email address in there, but start it as a, like a URL, with mail to colon, and the phone will go, this is an email address, and the scanner will pop up and say, do you want to email fred at example.com? Uh, and for SMS, it's SMS to colon, and then the number. Then you can optionally put another colon at the end and a message, so you can say text um, 6761, the word fun, and it will do that. Um, if you go to, there's a bunch of websites, but the Google one is particularly good, that I mentioned, which is somewhere on here. Um, that has a nice, easy, uh, graphical user interface. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, this might not be this one, but I, I'll try and tweet a link to it. But basically, it has a drop down. Uh, you know, if you do search Google for QR code generator SMS, for example, you'll find these ones where they have a drop down and say, Do you want to send an SMS, send an email, a web address, a calendar? Uh, something like that, drop it down, and they will give you the fields that you need to fill in, and it will generate it for you. But generally speaking, it's just the same as um, uh, HTTP, uh, not HTTP, uh, web syntax as well. 
who's controlling those sort of standards? And are they growing or are they, yeah, just, are so they limited? St standardization is an interesting one. And that makes it sound like I've only got a few more minutes. Um, basically, there, there are no standards. So uh, the QR code itself is an open standard. It was developed by Denso Wave and they've licensed, they've said anyone can use that royalty free. Uh, now, as for what happens when you scan a code, uh, it's, at the moment, it's de facto standards. So if it sees SMS to mail to or HTTP, that's fine. Um, it's a war of whichever is popular. So the Wi-Fi standard, so scan the code and it will tell you uh, which Wi-Fi network to connect to. That's uh, an ongoing standard. Uh, so at the moment, if you want to create the standard which will allow it to deliver fish and chips to you, you know, write a fish and chips protocol and try and get people to adopt it. That sounds really good, fish and chip protocol. Question over there. Yeah, so um, is there a trade-off between size and camera shape? So QR is meant to be a very quick response. I've managed to scan a QR code um, as a train is passing in front of the camera just through the uh, windows of a tube, which I was absolutely amazed with. Um, so generally speaking, um, it, it's about the size that it fills your viewfinder, as long as it's in your viewfinder. So it can be really big as long as you're, you're far back. Most QR scanners are really quick to render because all the, it is computer vision recognition, you know, it is magic in that sense, but it's really simple. It's, I'm looking for a black and white pattern. I found a black and white pattern, and it's, when it sees those three dots, it can work out roughly where it is, scan the rest of it, and decode it in a, you know, in seconds, under seconds. So, um, yeah, as, as long as it fits in your viewfinder, that should be okay. Question on the back there. Are there any stats about the take up of actually scanning of QR codes, not the creation of them? Yes, there are. Um, so, uh, there was a report released, I think, by Juniper, uh, which was saying how many, you know, that QR scanning has risen 153%. Uh, you made it up. This year. You made it up. I'm sure they made it up. Um, from, from my point of view, I'm not sure if you were here earlier, um, the best stats, I think, are real ones, not ones which are being massaged by analysts. So th this is the one from TFL. So TFL have put up uh, these posters everywhere, and we can see that. You know, in October they were getting maybe 3,000 scans a month. Now they're getting close to 12,000 scans a month. I don't think they put up that many more posters. So there, there is a growth. Um, <laughs> stats, uh, you know, will be made up by anyone. Um, so this is why I tend to look at the, the real stats. And again, if you go to my blog, which is down the bottom, shookstudmobi slash blog, um, I do a sort of roundup of real stats when I find them. But I'm, I'm quite encouraged by them. Any more for any more? <laughs> 